Hey guys, we all know engineers use 12 volt battery in our vehicle and all the circuits present in the vehicle work on this 12 volt battery and alternator of the vehicle. But if anything goes wrong with the systems due to any small reason, then it would be a disaster. Our vehicle won't turn on at all. So we need to protect 12 volt automotive systems. In this video, we will see one of the most famous protections that we need to use which is known as reverse polarity protection. So let's start. Let's say during maintenance where the battery positive and negative leads may be connected in the opposite polarity. Due to that, the internal circuit of the system might damage or there will be a short circuit between battery positive and negative terminals. To avoid that, we use reverse polarity protection. There are four methods through which we can do so. PN junction diode, Schottky diode, N-channel MOSFET and P-channel MOSFET. We use these components in series with the circuit. So the whole circuit current flows through these components. Well, the main loss in the application is due to the conduction only. Now we can segregate which component to use for our application. First is the PN junction diode. Using a rectifier diode as a blocking diode is the simplest and most cost effective way to apply a reverse polarity protection circuit. When we connect recovery rectifier in series with the load, it ensures that the current would flow through the circuit only when the battery is correctly connected. When the supply pin is connected to the battery positive and negative is connected to the ground, the circuit will work fine. But when the connections are reversed, the diode would get reverse biased and it will block the current flow acting as an open switch and shut down the system. Well, there is no need for control input for this circuit, which gives us low complexity and low component count. However, using this rectifier diode comes with a high forward voltage drop of the PN junction. This is the reason why these diodes are only used for low power application for load currents below 1 ampere. Also, we should consider inrush current through this rectifier. For example, when the battery is connected to the circuit, the bulk capacitor present in the system begins to charge very quickly, which gives rise to inrush current. We should check the peak current and duration of the pulse to ensure it does not exceed the specification mentioned in the datasheet. We can calculate the conduction loss of this diode by using forward voltage drop of the diode given for a steady state temperature of the PN junction and the load current. For example, if the circuit current is 0.8 amperes and VF of the diode is 1 volts, then the conduction loss would be around 0.8 watts. Nevertheless, the maximum total power dissipation of the rectifier diode has to be below the maximum limit given in the datasheet. If you use this diode for high power applications, then the losses across this diode would be huge, which will decrease the efficiency of the circuit, increase the temperature of the diode, and eventually it will fail. In order to overcome the high conduction losses of a rectifier diode, we can use a short key rectifier diode for reverse polarity protection. A short key diode comes with the same advantages as a rectifier diode, that is, there is also the least complexity. Additionally, it has very low power dissipation compared to the PN junction diode. And due to that, it can be used for higher load currents up to approximately 3 amperes. The power loss of this diode can be calculated with the same formula. If the circuit current is 1.5 amperes and VF of the diode is 0.5 volts, then conduction loss of this diode would be only 0.75 watts. Now, when we see the difference between the rectifier diode and Schottky diode, even though the current across the Schottky diode is high, 
still the conduction loss across it is lesser than the rectifier diode. However, short key rectifier comes with a higher leakage current due to its metal semiconductor interface. When the junction temperature of the short key diode increases, the leakage current becomes significantly larger, which results in unwanted effects such as thermal runaway. Similarly to the rectifier diode, inverse current through the diode must be considered. The peak current and the duration of the pulse must be checked to ensure it does not exceed specification. Like in the case of recovery rectifier, the conduction losses can be calculated by multiplying the temperature dependent voltage drop with the load current. Also for short key diodes, the junction temperature should not exceed the 175 degrees Celsius. Next device for reverse polarity protection is P-channel MOSFET. In this application, the MOSFET works in two different modes. First is diode mode and MOSFET mode. We saw in one of our previous videos, during the manufacturing of the MOSFET, a parasitic PN junction diode is created within the MOSFET cell. We connect a P-channel MOSFET like this in the circuit, where the drain is connected to the supply of the system and source is connected to the load. We connect a pull down resistor from the gate of the MOSFET to the ground and connect a Zener diode from the source to the ground for protection. The Zener diode will clamp the gate of the MOSFET to its Zener voltage and protect it against over voltage. When the MOSFET is not energized, that is, the gate terminal does not have a sufficiently negative voltage below its source to exceed its minimum threshold to turn on. And when the battery is connected correctly, it behaves as a forward bias diode. The power loss in the device is product of the forward diode voltage and current flowing through it. Once the gate to source threshold voltage is reached, the MOSFET turns on and switches from diode to MOSFET mode. Current then flows through the drain to source channel. And the power loss is a product of RDS on of the MOSFET and square of the current flowing through this channel. When the reverse polarity is connected, the MOSFET will be switched off because the gate to source voltage for this case will be positive. Conduction loss of this MOSFET would be so less. For example, let's say the RDS on is 0.1 ohms and current is 4 amperes then the conduction loss across this MOSFET would be only 1.6 watts. The next possible protection circuit can be constructed by using N-channel MOSFET. The majority of the advantages of P-channel MOSFET also apply to N-channel MOSFET. The major difference between these components is basically to enable an N-channel MOSFET by providing the positive VGS. And the biggest advantage of this N-channel MOSFET is that it is capable of conducting larger currents compared to P-channel MOSFET, as the RDS on of the N-channel MOSFET is much lower than the P-channel device. So there is significantly low power dissipation, and the N-channel device is much better suited for applications which require larger currents. We need to add a complicated gate driving circuitry to turn on this N-channel MOSFET which increases the cost and complexity of the circuit. If you summarize these circuits, we should select the reverse polarity protection circuit based on our current, complexity and cost requirements for a particular system. Well, that's all about the reverse polarity protection part. I have added all the references related to these circuits in the description. If you have any query, you can ask me in the comment section or email me. Hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And finally, thank you so much for watching this video.